Hello, welcome to the month of August, the eighth month of the year 2024. I'm a super judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, we've entered into a new month and God has something special for you. You know, sometimes people just think, eh, must, must it be at the beginning of any month? Hey, don't you realize that God marks days? He marks time. Don't think it was human beings that set the patterns of the day and the month and years. No, they may have named it. I understand what I'm saying, but you see, but the marking is was done by God. So that's why you see the, the, the movement of the moon, the movement of the sun. It's all planned. I don't think they just came up and said, let's, from this time to this time, let's call it January. From this time to this time. No, sir. Praise God. So listen, I welcome you to this new month. And put your hearts in God's word. Hacken to his word. Listen for his voice. And everything he's planned for you will be fulfilled. Praise God. We have a prayer meeting going on today. So wherever you are, you can join us. There's a meeting that is holding via Zoom. So if you look on your screen, you will see the, the passcode and the, the, uh, the Zoom ID. So you can quickly join the next watch. We're, we're praying at every watch and that's, uh, we started at 12 midnight and then 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Yeah, and 6 a.m., 9 a.m. We're going to all continue until 9 p.m. at every three hours. That's what, that's the time of prayer. Now, why do we do these things? We're doing this because the Lord commanded us to do it. And then he said, look, tune your hearts to my voice, incline your ears to my word. And then he says, set that first day of the month holy unto me. So it's like giving God the first fruit of the month. And guess what he does? He takes the whole month and makes it holy for you. Praise God. How does God make the, the month holy for you? Holy simply means um, belonging to. That's what holy means. When he says something is holy. You need to know holy unto who? See? So it's not holy because the thing itself is one special. No, it's holy because it belongs to someone. So it is holy unto that person. So when we say it's holy unto the Lord, we're saying we are giving God the full right to use that thing. Only him have the right to use that thing. So when we say, Lord, I leave everything I'm supposed to be doing today. I just want to fast and pray before you today and what you're doing is saying lord i set this day holy unto you then god will set the whole month holy for you ah no listen you see this work that we do as god's children it's deep deeper than a lot of people know but i pray that the spirit of god will make you understand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I was saying, incline your ears. Hear God's voice. Don't listen to the wrong people. See, we are approaching the season and time where we don't, truly, we don't have time for selling things. We don't have time for wrong teachings. We don't have time for charlatans. We don't, have, we don't just have time. This work is not a work. It's not an academic work. You've heard me say that many times. This work is real. It's practical. We exercise ourselves in godliness. We don't exercise ourselves in who has the best arguments. No, we exercise ourselves in faith. And then we do the works of faith, being guided by the Holy Spirit. So whatever you do, whatever actions you're taking, whatever belief you have, whatever thing you're listening to, it should spur you to actions of faith. 
we have people going around teaching all kinds of um, funny doctrines today. And you know they are wrong doctrines because they don't spoil you to faith. Anything, any teaching that does not excite your heart, that does not propel you to demonstrate faith in God. Now, faith in God is not a mental thing. Faith in God begins from the heart, but then you see the actions. That's why James told us faith without works is dead. Now, many people misunderstand that statement in itself, but see, what James was talking about is not you have faith, go and go and show working, you know. No, what he means is your faith will propel you to do the work. So there is the work of faith. So when I say I believe in God, you should be able to see actions that I think that show that I believe in God. Yes. See? So you see me do certain things. For example, when I pray, you wonder why, why do you pray like that? See? Because I believe in the one that I'm talking to. See? So I don't just... Mm, mm, no, I speak, I talk. Dear Lord, this is what I want. Lord, this is what I'm thinking. Lord, this is what I'm thinking of doing. Lord, this is what I need from you. I need you to give me wisdom. I need to make me understand something. You see, I'm talking. So why are you now? Now someone walks in and, and hear you talking and like, hey, who are you talking to? I'm talking to God. Huh? Where is he? He's here. Now, I see, that question, where is he, came because someone saw you demonstrating or doing some, some work. Someone sees you doing something. See? And then now, when they are wondering, why are you doing that? Say, hey, I believe in God. This month of August, the, the Spirit of God is, is inspiring my heart that we begin to talk about the knowledge of God. As we approach the end of days, as we approach the end of all things, and truly, we are approaching the end of all things. If you don't know it, please get that settled in your heart right now. The end is near. And because the end is near, there are certain truths that must be told. The, the thing a lot of people think is this, and, and that's why you must be very careful with your life. Sometimes, you know, it's easy to think, um, if this thing is true, why is everybody not saying it? Why is everybody not doing it? Yeah. And that's the interesting thing. <laughs> that's the interesting thing. Don't think everybody you see on the face of the earth is going in the same direction. Don't think everybody you see on the earth is a child of God. Don't think so. Don't think if everybody you see was a creation of God. It's not everybody that is a creation of God. Now you want to go technical. No. Not everybody on the earth is a creation of God. And if you don't know God, you will not understand these things. And so sometimes people want to use logic. You don't use logic with God. You'll be making a big blunder to even attempt that. It's, it's, it will displease the Lord that you want to use logic on him. Why? You remember he spoke. He says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. Now, someone sees that too. I want to say, eh, it means uh, we, we have nothing to do. It's God. Whatever he decides to do, he will do it. No, you don't get it. Because God made a statement, you go, Ah, uh, it tells the state of your heart. Yes. You see, if your earthly father, if you're close to your earthly father, and he says something that you don't quite understand, that looks controversial, or um, something that got everyone wondering, what is this man saying? What would you do? Would he just start and say, yes, I back my father. Man, yes, whatever he says, I back my father. 
You may say that at first. But what would you do next? Would you take the same place with everybody and say, hmm, this thing my father have said, hmm, I don't understand. Do. Would, would you do that? What would you do? When everybody is gone, you will go to him and say, Dad, don't you think you were too harsh? Don't you think you were too forward in that? Forward, I mean. And then he says, let me tell you the reason I said what I said. See, he has the opportunity to explain to you, but not to everybody. Now, when he explains to you, you understand. Why would you understand? Now, because... Number one, you know him, you trust his heart. That's why you even came to him. One who knows that his father is a murderer, he, his father kills, you know, at a wink, you know what I mean? And the father now comes and says, I will kill all of you. That kind of says, Look, let me advise you guys, run, you better run for your life. <laughs> but when you know that your, your father is, is full of love for people, and then you see him talking one day and says, I will kill all of you. You'll be taking that back. And then later on, you go say, I think you were too harsh. What's the matter? And then he tells you, know, you see these people, this is what they did to me before. This is what they have done. This is what they are planning to do. And then you go, oh, wow. Now I understand. Wow. You understand better. You see, the thing with God is, a lot of times people will hold God's one statement that he made. Now, some other people will come and say, God did not make that statement. You see, you know, sometimes people feel they are defenders of God and, and they don't even know the God that they are defending. You know, it's like someone say, ah, God cannot kill. He, he's not two-faced. He's, he's a one-face. God kills. He kills. In fact, the ability for him to kill is for our safety. Don't you understand? It's for our safety. He does kill. <laughs> oh, he does. Say, no, no, he doesn't kill. He, he, he's love. He cannot be love and kill. Love kills. You kill to protect that which you love. Don't you get? You see, now you see how, how funny the mind can be. He kills doesn't mean he will kill you. No. Now that's what they think. They think if he kills, that means he can kill any of us. No. You don't get. Can you, can you go beyond the surface? Can you go beyond the surface? Does God bless people? Yes, he does. Does God prosper people? Yes, he does. Okay, he blesses people. Yes, several examples in scriptures. People that have been directly blessed by God. But then you, you, you find, you, you now come to ask yourself the question, what about Job? Job, this, this, you say God bless Job. Yes, God bless Job. Satan testified concerning Job before the Lord. <laughs> and you know what he said? He says, you have blessed the work of his hands. Satan was before God in that meeting. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? That there is no one like him. And, and Satan didn't say Job was a hard worker. Satan didn't say Job was too smart. Satan said, does, God, does Job serve you for nothing? I mean, that means, does this serve you for nothing? So Satan now was accusing God that the reason Job serves you is because you have blessed the work of his hands. Did you get that? Satan is telling the testimony. Now don't bring that talk of Satan cannot say the truth, so we cannot take what he says. <laughs> you know, sometimes when your mind is... May God help you. So Satan was saying before the Lord, and God didn't tell him, shut up, you're telling a lie. I didn't bless Job. Look at that statement. And, and Satan says, you have blessed the work of his hands. He said, put forth your hand now. 
and touch. You know, now Satan believes, you know, James said, even the devil believes, the devils believe that there is God. So you know, I believe in God. It doesn't move the devil. They also believe in God. See? So, so Satan said to God, put your hand and touch his world and see if he will not curse you to your face. So Satan knew that God had the ability to bless the work of man's hands. And Satan knew that God had the ability to prevent men or destroy things. That's what he said. He didn't say to God that, allow me to destroy what he has. And he says, stretch, put your hand forth. Oh, maybe you think I'm just talking. Praise <laughs> God. Let me show you that scripture. Job, book of Job. Brother Job, 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 chapter one. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. This month is going to be so blessed. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 9, Job chapter 1. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made an edge around him? around his household and around all that he has on every side. See? So, Satan is testifying that God builds an edge around certain people. He is talking about Job. He says, you are the one who has built an edge around Job. Okay, watch this now. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. So the result of the blessing of God on Job's life is what? His possessions increase on the land. Don't tell me God does not bless people. Now, <laughs> but now, look at, he was still talking to God. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. Satan believed that God had the ability to do this. Yes. And he challenged God to it. He says, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. He will curse you to your face. And what did God do? God said, okay. I give you rights over everything that he has. More, more, more like God. See, Satan has said, you've, you've built an edge around him. So, now God says to him, I give you permission to go through that edge. Yeah, that's what God said. I give you the permission to go through. Until God did that, Satan couldn't touch Job. So now you see, God has the ability to bless. And the same God can actually pull the strings and everything will be gone. Is that not a two-faced? See, we have day and night. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We have day and night. We have front and, and the rear. He's God. Get to know him and get to know him for your good. Don't get to know him through one man's. No, I'll show you several examples in scriptures. So truly, by this meeting and this conversation between God and, and the devil, Job lost everything that he had. And it's not God that took it, it's Satan that took it. <laughs> who brought up the idea think who brought up the idea and Job was living his life and God had a meeting and Satan shows up and God said have you considered he didn't say have you considered the whole earth who's causing you trouble and then Satan now says you know what I've been going around there but you see there's this guy Job the guy is so I don't know he's just no 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 it was God that brought the name 
of Job. It was God that brought Satan to the attention of Job. Have you considered my servant Job? So the question you should ask yourself is, what was on God's mind? Now that's the problem. So you don't just judge by what has happened. You judge by the intentions of God. And to know the intentions of God, you've got to have the Spirit of God because it's the Spirit of God that will guide you into all truth. Truth about what? His intentions. So you don't use an act of God to judge his personality. You see an act, you dip in to know his personality. And the only way you will know his personality is when you are giving entr entrance into his person. And that's the job of the Holy Spirit in your life. Praise God. So this month, as, as we're dealing with the knowledge of God, you, you'll find us talking about the Godhead and we'll deal with several things. All for one reason, that you will know Him. And in knowing Him, you will believe in Him. Praise God. My time is up and I pray for you. Father, open up the gates of this month of August and fill your children with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you, precious Lord. We see your glory fill the earth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Now remember to join the next watch. Join the next meeting. The Zoom ID and, and passcode is on your screen. Just join the next meeting. God bless you. Bye.